Hi there. I just left a client's home and uh, while I was there the discussion of GST came up. And basically uh, the question that came up was when should GST be a concern and who should be concerned about it? Well the short answer is GST should always be a concern and the concern should be of both the buyer and the seller. But because this is such a complex matter I thought I would do two video blogs on this topic. The first one, this first one, I will talk about just in general terms and the second one I'll talk in a little more detailed terms. So GST is always applicable in new construction, new lots from subdivided lands and in tenanted properties. The Alberta Real Estate Association residential purchase contracts all state that GST is included in the purchase price if it's applicable. Now that includes your principal residence and that could be your principal home in a city, town or village or hamlet or it could also be a country residential acreage. Now but generally you don't pay GST on the sale of your principal residence. Generally. The Alberta Real Estate Association agricultural and commercial purchase contracts all state that GST is not included in the purchase price. So in other words, if you're buying a property for around $700,000, uh, you'll be paying the $700,000 according to the purchase contract, but when you go into the lawyers to pay the final closing costs, you'll be bringing in an extra check for another $35,000, which is the 5% of GST that would be applicable on the $700,000 purchase price. So when is GST applicable and when is it payable? Well, it's applicable when it comes to substantial renovations and because that in itself is such a detailed complex matter, I'm going to talk about that in my second video blog. When is it payable as well? It's payable in businesses running out of a, out of a residential property such as someone doing tailor work or seamstress work or if there's a mechanic working in the garage, uh, bookkeeping, anything that's done on the property that generates revenue. With respect to a country residential property, basically the same applies. Uh, if you've got uh, an acreage big enough uh, to uh, say board animals on, fine, GST would be applicable. Storing machinery, for example, or if you uh, decide you want to set, fence, up, fence off maybe uh, 10, 15, 20 acres and uh, sell that off as hayland or rent it out, whatever, GST would be applicable. Now, I mentioned that in the commercial purchase contracts and in the agricultural purchase contracts, GST is over and above the purchase price. In what's the difference when it comes to country residential properties or an agricultural property? Well, from a GST perspective, really not much. It's kind of the same. So GST is very complex. So before signing anything, my goodness, anything, Make sure you speak with your accountant or your lawyer to discuss GST and find out how it should be handled. Get the advice. Then once you get that advice, make sure that you make arrangements with your lawyer or your accountant to have that same discussion with your realtor. And the reason you want to have that discussion with the realtor is that the realtor will be able to draft the purchase contract in such a way as to protect you with respect to GST. It's critical because my example earlier of $35,000, you're buying a $700,000 property, you're going to have to write a check for an additional $35,000 and that can sometimes be extremely painful. My name is Stan Kushner and if you've got any questions about this particular blog or uh, anything to do with something you may find on my website, please feel free to call me on my cell phone directly at 403-519-2201 or you can email me at info at stankushner.com or you can go directly to my website and at www.stankushner.ca. I want to make sure though that I emphasize the, dif the difference here. My website is .ca, stankushner.ca. My, my uh, email address is info at stankushner.com. Have a super day.